In redesigning their MR2 and Celica ranges, Toyota have abandoned the aggressive angularity of the 80s in favour of soft and gentle curves that are supposed to imitate the human body. It's bound to be the principal talking point for observers, if not potential buyers, and will no doubt evoke strong but differing passions. Under the skin, though, there's more power and performance, both for the MR2 GT and also for the Celica GT4. With its rallying pedigree, you might expect the GT4 to be a bit harsh in all action on the roads. But in fact, it's a very refined, sophisticated coupe. And it does everything with ease. There's ABS brakes, power steering, and uh, a turbocharger that comes in so smoothly you hardly know it's there until you look at the speedometer. So, all in all, a lot of refinement, but that very refinement tends to take away some of the driver satisfaction that you might have been expecting. So, a little bit remote, maybe a little bit too good, and it's £5,000 more, albeit with air conditioning and other luxuries, than its two-wheel drive counterpart. Unlike its predecessor, the new Celica GT4 is easy to tell from its two-wheel drive cousin. There's wider wheel arches front and rear, a distinctive slatted grille, and these scoops on the bonnet. The scoops are all part of a package with a turbocharger feeding compressed air into the intercooler, and it's the intercooler that is fed by that large central scoop, cooling the air before it goes into the engine. All this producing some 204 horsepower for this four-wheel drive version, as opposed to the 158 for the normally aspirated front-wheel drive car. Inside the bulbous rear end, there's plenty of volume, but not very practical in terms of shape, especially the spare wheel that intrudes into the floor, making things very awkward. Still, as with all hatchbacks, the rear seats do fold down, and then there's a lot more space. With the rear seats upright, there's room in the back for two children, but little head or legroom for adults. Not that the Celica GT4 is really a family car. It's a fast and practical Grand Tourer, offering speed with great safety, and all in near silence and pampered luxury. In reality, a long way from the competitive image where the old model has just won the Safari Rally. Toyota have done another complete redesign on their popular MR2. First introduced back in 1985, then in the angular shape, the new model features this curvaceous 1990s look but still retains that mid-engine layout. More or less everything else has changed. The car is nine inches longer, a little wider and lower, and in some ways softer and more civilised. Toyota are even offering an automatic version mated to the less powerful 119 horsepower engine. With the new car weighing over 300 pounds more than the old, the performance suffers as well. But with this new GT version, the situation is reversed. There's 158 horsepower on tap and a big boost in torque. And that's more than enough grunt for some very stimulating motoring in the appropriate circumstances. Not only is the MR2 fun out on the road, it retains this T-bar optional layout, which means we can take away these sunshades to allow more light into the car. And on better days than this, when the weather's nicer, remove the glass panel each side to make it into an open-air car. Now, before, these pieces used to have to be stowed in the nose along with the spare wheel. Now, there's extra space behind the seats each side to put these panels. Also room for the on anorak or maybe even a slim briefcase. Also, the boot's larger. With a 50% increase in volume, there's now a very useful space, not only for a couple of soft bags, but much more importantly, the set of golf clubs. In front of that, there's the engine, with its middle layout never easy to get at. Out on the road, I really enjoy the MR2. It encourages you to drive with enthusiasm, the engine right behind your ear, singing away, with the red line up at 7,000, the uh, engine noise really is a delight. Maybe a bit noisy for some on long journeys, though. The driving position, well, it's laid out perfectly. You've got adjustment for seat and steering angle to order to get everybody comfortable. 
the handling again is classic mid-engined, as good as the old MR2, mild understeer, switching to oversteer, but uh, great fun. Some people may find that transition to oversteer a might sudden with the heavier and more powerful engine. It's probably a little more harsh than the old car. But for most drivers, the MR2 GT offers Ferrari-like responsiveness and excitement at a fraction the price. The history of affordable mid-engine sports cars is hardly littered with great marketing successes. The new MR2, though, stands a good chance of breaking that pattern. And, along with the Celica, not to mention the Supra, Toyota offers excellent coverage of the sporting car sector. In brief, the Celica GT4 scores well for performance, comfort and safety, with reservations over the unusual styling, a certain lack of responsiveness and the price. With the MR2 GT, the main selling points are its good driving position, excellent handling and sheer excitement, while, on the downside, there's no ABS across the range, no catalytic converter on the GT model, and the engine noise could be a little wearing.